Hey y'all, it's Anime Gaming, and today I'm going to be live reacting to Gekage no Guitaro episode 70. And I'm going to start this live reaction in the 2 minute and 5 second mark because I skipped the openings and the flash forwards. And without further delay, I'm going to start this in 1, 0, go! Alright, let's see what we get. Hmm. He's a guardian god who lives on the Forbidden Mountain. Hmm. Huh. Well, it could either be a god or a really OP yokai that gives off godlike qualities. That's also a possibility. Oh my. Seems like a rough destiny, though, with the way those two look serious about it. Yeesh. Alright. Hmm, every four days without foul. Oh. Holy cow. I'm assuming the person that's probably gonna stumble into that's probably gonna be our favorite rat. A rat man. Let's just be serious. <laughs> or it could also be a regular couple too, to try to subvert our... It could also be a regular couple. Ho! Oh. I mean, I kind of sound like when I'm be the guardian. I mean, yeah, I would listen to Swag Taro. <laughs> oh my. Taro's way older than he looked. Woo! Taro's old enough to be his drums <laughs> with his age. Hmm. That's actually a good point. But why? That makes no sense. I mean, maybe they'll establish it in the next few sequences, but why would he want to destroy it? Oh. I could see him wanting to break away from his ties and all that. In a way, if you think about it, it is kind of fucked up that he's kind of forced in his life to protect a stone, too. I mean, just imagine, people want to live their life, some people want to move away from their homes, they want to move away from the nets. I mean, metaphorically speaking, it's probably what Gento feels like he can't mature the way he wants. But he's going about it the wrong way, though, he sh by wanting to break the stone, you know? That's like the completely worst way of doing it because he's pretty much breaking a net, possibly a natural landmark that's got a lot of history behind it, most likely. Damn. Okay, guys, I apologize to like the three or four Ratman, man, Ratman fans in the world. I'm sorry, I 
even considered the possibility of him possibly causing something to occur to ha possibly happen in this episode? Oh. Huh. Oh, <laughs> good. Good. Hopefully it can defuse the situation. Oh no. So they pretty much want to visit the stone, and that's why the grandfather dies, to save the son of Kento. So that's it. Kind of like a life for a life, an eye for an eye. <laughs> you still want to open with Pandora's box. Jeez. He should try to negotiate the price up. I'd be like, hmm, that sounds nice. What about 20 billion yen? I mean, 20 million yen. Oh, no. I mean, as, if they, as long as they gave the money, then that's fit. No! Yo, that is way... That's stepping way above the boundaries of eth ethics. And it does make sense, too, that, that um, the Gramps would do that. I gotta say, man. That is on some bro status right there. I mean, not bro status, that's on some, like, per epic parental status. I gotta give my respects to Grant Kento's grandfather. Oh, my. I don't know, would a guitar actually interfere? This seems like a human-on-human -human situation, unless the stone has to do, do something with yokai, though. But yeah, I don't think guitar is gonna help out. At least not the grandfather in this flashback. Oh, come on. Uh, I mean, I guess, uh, you know what they say, sometimes, depending on... Oh! <laughs> Yo! Yowzers! I mean, you know what they say, you reap what they you sow, and these two went way too far in breaking a piece of the stone off. Oh! Okay, now that's just creepy! That's actually creepier than some of the stuff I see in horror movies. What? Shouldn't he be worried though about... Why is he smiling? <laughs> what the fuck? Is he a sociopath? Or is it, um... Oh, you'd think he would be more worried about his buddy. Yeah. Oh, he's actually helping out. Guitaro, okay. I mean, no, no, don't get me wrong. I'm surprised because it seems like it's a human inflicted situation, you know? A human on human scenario. I normally think. 
Normally, unless it's a human that Katara really likes, like, um, Mana, I don't... I'm surprised that he's actually interfering. I mean, I guess a kid is involved with Kento, so that's probably why Katara's helping out. It is established that he does have a soft spot towards kids. What?! If I were him, I'd be like, fuck plastic surgery, I wouldn't want to fix it with that! Because just imagine, even if you can't fix it with plastic surgery, just imagine like the nerves being twisted of your ears and all that. It would fuck up your sense of he hearing. Oh, oh, oh shit! That is just creepy. He should do it. <laughs> fuck! He's like one of those scientists that would inject himself with the sample of a disease just to find out if it's a fucking vaccine. <laughs> That's what he is. The scientist, dude. Good. It was for his own good, Katara. He should be blessed to, at the very least, get off Scott Free. At least he didn't disintegrate in like a pool of blood, you know? Oh, <laughs> Daddy Eyeball, is he gonna jinx them all? Oh. I guess he didn't jinx anyone then if the cloud yeah, the clouds are still there. Okay, now that is going way too far. I mean, it's his fault. I don't feel sorry for him one bit. What? Is there quicksand there or what? <laughs> what the? I mean, I guess since... Oh... I mean, I guess this is the Gekka Geno Gatoro world, so... Hmm. Must be some kind of special mountain magic thing. Oh... Hopefully that changes Kento's... Oh my, if something happens to Kento, I ain't gonna feel sorry for him. Nah, no, don't worry, Guitar, you tried your best, dude. That's, at the very least, he can hold his head up high. Yo, I like that fuck, the way he's disappearing. <laughs> oh, Kento, the ultimate, oh. Kenzo, the Baka. You know, you know who I feel sorry for the most. Kanto's grandfather. He sacrificed his life for that little shit. That's who I feel sorry for the most. That's what, that's what really pisses me off about Kento. He's all small and all smug, like, but he's not into putting into consideration the sacrifice that his grandfather went towards. He gave up his life for him. Man, that's what really steams me. Oh. And these two fools. Hopefully at the very least, the woman that they're with doesn't get harmed because... She tried to warn Kento. She seen... No, 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 no. No. To avoid it, woman. No, 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 no. She's cool, I don't want. Aww. I mean, she looked so cute when she said it's so pretty, but. It just sucks. She's like the only one. She hasn't done anything wrong, you know? And yet she's gonna be the one. One of the three that's going to suffer. He 
He better haul ass. He better haul ass because No, he should be hauling ass and going back to the fucking mountain. You've got to be. But then again, that's arrogant sometimes. People are that cocky. Like, you try to warn them and people don't listen sometimes. So I kind of like the moral lecture here in this Gekka Gunna Guitar episode. No matter how much you try, there's just some people you can't reform. Like, even if you have evidence smack in front of them. What the fuck? He... Oh, I guess he was... Whoa, that is on some Final Destination shit right there. Whoa! No, 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 not Chinatsu. She's like the innocent one. Yeah, he has no one to blame but himself. Did he not notice the black? Uh, like the blackening and then like the disintegration of skin? No, that's... no... Man, she was like the only one out of the crew that didn't deserve to die. Probably because of the grandfather. Although I could be wrong. Wait, is he gonna go kamikaze mode with that dynamite? Because... He done fucked up! Yeah, you know what? I want to see this who punished. I hope it's slow and painful. I hope. Yes. Oh, I'm so gonna love this. That's what he gets for not listening to our boy Swatara. Oh, yeah. I'm loving it. Yo, I kind of like that. <laughs> It kind of reminds me of those hands in Fullmetal Alchemist, like the ones when Edward and Alphonse try to do, like, um, Forbidden Alchemy to try to revive someone. Huh? Wait, how do you do that? Oh. Yo, that's actually pretty cool. That's a smart way of also utilizing Sandwich more into the plot, utilizing her abilities. That's... Aww. She's a keeper. He should... Kenta should consider marrying Chinatsu. She's a sweet woman. Yes! Fuck! <laughs> that was nothing bad. Oh. So that explains it. Hmm. I gotta admit, Jim Kento's father and grandfather are beautiful individuals. Just a shame they're condemned, though. To that life. Kind of like the message, though. Sometimes life ain't fair. Sometimes you're born into, like, some shitty circumstances. And sometimes you just gotta hold your neck high and live with it. I think that's the message that this episode's going for. That's my interpretation of it. In a way.
But at the very least, now he's accepted it, though. Okay, that is on some creepy pasta there. <laughs> but in a way, I kind of like that too. Showing off if Kenzo or is that straight from the edict given by the Tantatambo? They would be under some dire circumstances, so I do like that. Pretty much giving us, yeah, it's a happy ending, but if they diverge from the proper path, things are not going to be so pleasant for them. So I kind of like the way the episode ended off with a slightly creepy vibe. And so when I thought, I thought this episode was a solid, of a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being abysmal, 10 being exceptional, 5 being average. I thought this was a solid 7 out of 10. Because for 1, it had a nice moral message. It had the message, at least for me, at least I interpret it as, it had the moral message just sometimes. Life, it really, oh, okay, the, um, the preview. Oh, some of the yokai from the yokai hotel episode, whoa. Shit! Oh, never mind. I guess it wasn't from the Yoka from the Yoka as well, but damn! It looks like the Jinchanko vest from the looks of it, that thing actually beeps you up significantly. At least from the looks of things. Holy cowzers. Now, here is the thing about this episode, though. I actually really liked it for a few reasons. For one, it had the moral mess. It had the message of life ain't exactly fair, and I kind of like how it has that message because for one, you have Kanto's father. He hoped that he wouldn't have to go through that, but he kind of has to anyway. And Kanto got sick, so I kind of like the message of sometimes life ain't fair, but then you just gotta hold up your head, head and live through it. Like afterwards. When Kento realized that there's no way of escaping this, and he pretty much goes with his father, and he becomes like the guardian, I kind of like that message with the symbolism of them taking on the responsibilities. It's pretty much kind of like has the message of you just gotta just gotta keep up with life, even though it isn't exactly fair. You just gotta do the best you can with the cards dealt with you in life. So I like that message. And two. Aside from that, I also like how from the story standpoint, you actually get a bit of Guitaro's gentleness because, remember, multiple episodes established Guitaro usually only interferes if into human yokai affairs or yokai yokai affairs. Normally, unless it's someone that Guitaro's really close with, like, say, Mana, Guitaro really normally wouldn't really interfere with on human on human affairs at least that's what the some of the previous episodes have implied at the very least but i actually like how this episode shows off that no there's actually exceptions to those rules like when you actually see Gataro actually helping out gento and gento's father and grandfather i was actually taken aback i was like whoa Unless Tantanambo is like some kind of like yoka, but they established that it's a god, so I guess it's a legitimate god. So who knows? I mean, who knows? Yeah, it's probably yeah, it's a, it's a god. I guess. I guess. Okay, okay. But scratch that. I like how it pretty much establishes that. No, if a kid's in danger too, then yeah, looks like Guitar will also step up and help out the kid too. Because you gotta remember, current Gitaro is gentler than Gitaro established in the past, but I like how the flashback showed off that even when Gitaro had more of a hardcore personality, because remember in episode one of Gegeke no Gitaro, Gitaro was kind of hardcore, and since Kenta was like a little kid, this was, <laughs> yeah, this was definitely years ago, I like how it pretty much establishes he had the spot, soft spot for kids even years back. So I do like that too. Pretty much again showing off Guitaro's spot, soft spot for children. So that's why I also felt I did well from the story standpoint too. 
And then additionally, I like the premise of pretty much Kitaro utilizing his friends like Sandwich to try to like convince Kento on what he's doing isn't exactly the best idea by utilizing Sandwich's abilities. I like that. To see more of Kitaro's friends utilized into the plot is nice. Because remember, just a few episodes ago, Wally Wall was utilized. Then a few episodes, you got Roller Clock being utilized. So an episode where Sandwich is utilized again is nice. I actually like this. It fleshes out the uh, minor character cast and Gekko no Kitaro even more. So that's why I also felt it did well from the character standpoint. And it made you care about Kento's um, friend Chinatsu too. Because she honestly was in his... She was, She seems like a nice woman, and it was nice to see that it was just a hallucination. This helped give the episode tension, because for a second, I literally thought she died. And while, yes, you could argue the tension was kind of like in the false tension variety because nothing happened, at the very least, it was still tension, because I felt emotions of fear for Shinatsu and some of Kento's friends. And also... I felt worried for Kenzo for a slight extent because of the sweetness of his grandfather. So that's why I felt it also did well from the character standpoint. And yeah. Animation wasn't the strongest, but it got the job done. Art was pretty cool, and I liked the OST. And that's why I thought this episode was an above average 7 out of 10 episode for me, actually. I enjoyed it, and I cannot wait to see more, y'all. So anyways, everyone. These are my thoughts on Get Giga no Guitaro episode 70. Be sure to comment on your thoughts in the episode in the comments down below. Rate the video, subscribe, share it, and I'll see you guys later if you come back for more. Because I'm definitely going to be pumped up for next week's episode. Although, just a heads up, I might be late. But I'll try to be on time, though. But I'm just giving y'all the heads up. Alright, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great and safe day. Bye-bye, y'all.